foster brother volunteered to do the job. Muhammad said, O Messenger of Allah, do you wish that I should kill him? He said, Yes. He said, Permit me to talk to him in the way I deem fit. He said, Talk as you like. So Muhammad came to Kaab and talked to him, saying, This man, the Prophet, has made up his mind to collect charity from us. And this has put us to a great hardship. When he, when he heard this, Kaab said, By Allah, you will be put to more trouble by him. Muhammad answered, No doubt now we have become his followers, and we do not like to forsake him until we see what turn his affairs will take. I want that you should give me a loan. He said, what will you mortgage? Muhammad answered, What do, do you want? The immoral and heartless Jew demanded Muhammad, uh, demanded woman, and Jew demanded woman and children as articles of security against the debt. Muhammad said, Should we pledge our woman whereas you are the most handsome of the Arabs? Handsome of the Arabs, and the son of one of us may be abused by saying that he was pledged for the for two wasp measurement unit of weight of dates but we can pledge you our weapons carb agreed at another time went to see carb for the same purpose and there were more or less the same subjects only that abu would bring him some companions. The plan was successful and provided for the presence of both men and weapons. On Rabi al-Awwal, 14th at night, the, the year 3 AH, the people said goodbye to the, prophet, to the Prophet and set out in the name of Allah to implement the carefully drawn plan. The Prophet stayed back praying for them and supplicating Allah to render them success. The, ma the men went and called upon him. At night he came down, although his wife warned him not to meet them, alleging that. I hear a voice which sounds like the voice of murder. He said, It is only Muhammad bin Maslama. And my foster brother Abu Naila, when a gentleman is called at night, even if he be pierced with a spear, he should respond to the call. Abu said to his, to his companions as he comes down, I will extend my hands towards his head to smell, and when I, told, when I hold him fast, you should do your job. So when he came down, they talked together for about an hour. They then invited him to go out and spend a nice time in the moonlight. On the way out, Abu Naila remarked, I smell the nicest perfume from you. Cobb said, Yes, I have, I have with me a mistress who is the most scented of the woman of Arabia. Abu again said, Allow me to smell the scent of your, on your head. He said, Yes, you may smell. So he caught it and smelled. Then he said, Allow me to do so once again. He then held his head fast and said to his companions, Do your job, and they killed him. The group of men came back after fulfilling their mission. One of them, Al Harith, was wounded by mistake with the swords of his men and was bleeding badly. When they reached Baki, they shouted, Allah is great. The Prophet heard them and realized that they had killed the enemy of Allah. As they saw him, he said cheerfully, faces are, your, are yours. In reply, they said, and yours, O Messenger of Allah. They handed the head of the tyrant over to him. He entertained Allah's praise for their success. He then applied his saliva to al Haris' wound, and it healed on the spot. When the Jews learned about the death of their tyrant Kaab, they were scared, and even their stone-like hearts 
were in the grip of an inexpressible panic. They realized that the messenger of Allah would thenceforth never hesitate to use force when good words and admonition failed. They remained silent and resigned and faked adherence to covenants. Now the Prophet was free to collect his thoughts and give himself up to resolving foreign affairs and facing dangers that could be carried with hostile blo wind blowing again from Mecca. The invasion of Bahran in Rabi Ath Thani, the year 3 AH, the Prophet led a campaign comprising 300 warriors to Bahran in the area of Al Furu. He stayed there till Jamada. 3AH. No fighting took place in the process of this patrolling invasion. Zayd bin Haritha leads a campaign on the trade routes of Quraysh. This was the most successful campaign, campaign at pr prior to Uhud battle. It took place in Jumada. The year 3AH summer approached and it was High time for the Mecca trade caravans to leave the Syria for Syria. The people of Quraysh, whose lives depended mainly on a mercantile economy consisting of summer caravans to Syria and winter caravans to Abyssinia, Ethiopia, were now at a loss as to what route they would have to follow in order to avoid the back-breaking military strikes that the Muslims successfully afflicted on the polytheists. They held a meeting to discuss the chances of escaping the economic block blockade and decided to go along a trade route across Najd to Iraq. Farad bin Hayyan was appointed as a guide for the caravan led the caravan along the new route. News of the meeting leaked out through under the effect of wine and it flew fast to Medina by Sulit. The Prophet immediately mustered 100 horsemen under the leadership of Zayd bin Haritha and dispatched them to intercept and capture the caravan. They caught up with the camels at a place called al Qarda. They took the polytheists by surprise and arrested their guide and two other men. Safwan and his guards fled away without showing the least resistance. The caravan was carrying silver and wares whose value amounted to 100,000 dirhams. The booty was distributed among among the Muslims, warriors after one-fifth had been set aside for the Prophet, Farad embraced Islam out of his own sweet free will. As a result of this episode, the Muslims foiled Quraysh's plan to find a new trade route. The economic siege laid to Mecca was thus consolidated and had a great impact on the mercantile economy of Mecca. The Meccans were terribly anxious and worried about their prospects of life now at stake with no long, with no hope whatsoever for any possible rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation of commercial life or redemption of former prestige at the social political level except through two avenues categorically contrasting relinquishing all symbols of arrogance and all attitudes of haughtiness through reconciliation with the new status quo and peace peace peaceableness with the muslims or launching a decisive overwhelming war with the aim of crushing down the military forces of medina it was apparent through the process of events that Quraysh had opted for the second alternative's loud cries were being heard everywhere in Mecca, demanding immediate vengeance and quick retaliatory action. 
It is movements of on all levels constituted the direct preliminaries to the Battle of Uhud.